projections and estimates pursuant to SO Standing Order 1082 and the motion adopted by the committee on Monday, October 17, 2022. The committee is meeting on the study of the Rive Can application. Just a friendly reminder not to put air or earpieces next to the microphone as it causes feedback and potential injury to our interpreters. Before we start with our opening statements, just very quickly, um, order papers, or sorry, um, papers that we've asked to be uh, tabled here. Just a quick update, uh, Mr. Firth has been in contact with our committee regarding bank records related to GC strategies. According to his accountant, because of payments are older, it's gonna require one or two extra days to produce the information. We originally planned to have them already, but it's gonna be a couple more days, which I think is acceptable. Second order for production of documents, different versions of the resumes of the two Butler witnesses have been received and are now just with translation. We're going to start with uh, Mr. McDonald, I understand, for a five minute opening statement. Then, uh, Mr. Utano, please go ahead, Mr. McDonald. Here. Honorable Membre du Comité Parlementaire. I have some. Dear members of this committee. However, I'm going to add some words today because of some events of last night. There has been a concerted effort to portray Mr. Utano and myself as corrupt. The narrative is compelling, but it's based on untrue allegations. The falsehoods and innuendo have been plastered in the national press. Senior CBSA officials have distanced themselves from us. Nos carrières ont été suspendues. Our careers were suspended. Our lives upset. From Ms. Simmons, someone I do not know. I hope you go to jail. Amongst other things, you are corrupt, greedy, a sorry excuse for a human being. I hope you are ashamed. I hope you seek redemption. These are all based on falsehoods. There was no cozy relationship, no conspiracy, and no fraud involving Mr. Utano or myself. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to finally present the truth, address the extraordinary allegations that have been raised by Butler AI, and to show the facts that have been that you have been misled. Je commencerai par pour vous présenter. I would like to begin by presenting the context of ArriveCan. National mobile application for Canadians to re-enter the country. CBSA's contracting authority, the finance branch, authorized the sole source and PSPC negotiated the terms and authored the final contract. Our innovation team was given less than five days to pursue options. Six companies were evaluated. GC Strategies and Deloitte were the only vendors willing and able to satisfy the requirements in the narrow time frame. I was not involved in the GC Strategies vetting. Two options were presented to my superior, then Vice President and Chief Information Officer Min Doan. Min Doan specifically rejected the Deloitte as an option. Deloitte had in fact been my preference. As a result of the direction given to proceed by Mr. Doan, GC Strategies was recommended to the contracting authority. As the Director General of Innovation, the decision was never mine to make. Pendant 12 mois, j'ai dirigé. During 12 months, I led the team developing and scaling ArriveCan until May 2021. And during my involvement, all task authorizations provided to GCS were met on time and within budget. I provided a costing for ArriveCan and it was $6.3 million. This was shared with my colleagues and my supervisor. En ce qui concerne Butler AI. With regard to Butler AI, their allegations are unsubstantiated. This committee, they began to collapse. They told this committee they believed their chatbot would make them $26 million a year. Their disappointment has turned into a campaign of baseless accusations against Mr. Utano and I. The facts are, in 2019, Dalian and Karatex competed fairly for a general services IT contract. On November the 19th, 2019, I received an unsolicited, jointly branded GCS and Butler proposal for Bill C-65. The department, the HR department was the client and the decision maker for the work with Butler. A feasibility study was asked for by CBSA that had six parts. There was never a pilot in scope. My VP instructed me directly to help them deliver an executive appropriate presentation. I advised my VP that CBSA would use an existing contract. The proper contracting processes were followed. PSPC has validated this. I have had an unblemished reputation in the public service for 23 years. 
I have competed openly for every single promotion I've ever received, starting at an entry level position as a student. My actions have always been guided by a commitment to the public interest. The allegations have been painted are incomplete, inaccurate, and have done a misleading narrative. The reality, along with the accountability of the leadership of the CBSA, is that the result of my reputation and the careers of good public servants are being shattered. Je vous remercie. I thank you, members of the committee, for allowing me the opportunity to share the facts openly and honestly. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Uh, Mr. Utano, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair and members of this committee, je vous remercie de m'avoir donné l'occasion. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today to answer your questions regarding the Arrive Canada study, and most recently, allegations made by Butler AI regarding work undertaken during my time at CBSA. It has been conveyed to this committee that I committed wrongdoing. I have not. My reputation and career have been attacked and damage inflicted on both me personally and professionally. Today, I will present the facts. I will speak clearly and honestly about all my actions. I welcome transparency and accountability. We have provided a brief to this committee with evidence that will substantiate all <clears throat> statements and facts outlined below. Regarding ArriveCan, at the onset of COVID pandemic, I was an executive director at CBSA responsible for the prototype design and division that included the Mobile Center of Excellence team. In early March 2020, the Public Health Agency of Canada, PHAC, asked CBSA for urgent assistance to develop technical capabilities needed for contact tracing at the border. No such capabilities existed at that time. The technical team was responsible for assessing technical solutions needed to fill this operational response on an extremely urgent timeline. Option analyses of this magnitude typically take months. We were given less than five days. The technical team assessed six in total. Internal development was determined as not feasible given a shortage of skill set, capacity, and the urgent timeline. An outsourced option was deemed necessary. The two possible outsourced options were presented, the Deloitte and GC strategy solutions. Both options were sent to the Vice President and Chief Information Officer, Min Doan, for consideration and decision. At a, at a team meeting, we were informed that the Deloitte solution was discounted, leaving the only option of mobilizing the GC strategy solution. The Arrive Can app and all its technical components evolved considerably throughout the pandemic from the original concept design. It was created through the collaboration of CBSA employees and over 19 technology vendors, one of which was GC Strategies. The entire agency's pandemic contact tracing response cost 55 million. This is not all technology development. The breakdown of the spending is published information and I've included it again for reference. All GC Strategies task authorizations related to ArriveCAN followed all procurement guidelines. Contracting was overseen and managed by PSPC. My responsibility remained to ensure the technology requirements were met and delivered on time, and they were. I will now address the separate issue of Baller AI. To be clear, Baller AI did not work on ArriveCAN and in no way was part of the ArriveCAN program. My involvement with the Bottler feasibility study was limited. On September 27, 2021, shortly after I assumed the role of Acting Director General, I received an email from Ms. Dutt with a CC to my team. The email raised two issues, a late payment to Bottler from the prime contractor, Dalian Karatics, and the second was discontent regarding a private partnership they established specifically around the collaboration between Bottler AI, Dalian Karatics, and GC Strategies. The CBSA responded to Ms. Dutt within 24 hours. This included resolution to the delayed payment, and a remind, reminded, we reminded Ms. Dutt that the contract between CBSA and Dalian Karatics had contractual privacy clauses preventing us, CBSA, from discussing private or proprietary matters with subcontractors. Ms. Dutt's letter raised no concerns and no allegations about the CBSA or any of its employees, past or present. In fact, on a follow-up email the next day, Ms. Dutt praised the good relationship and positive experience she enjoyed to date, working with the CBSA and its employees. Moreover, she expressed her, she expressed her appreciation for the prompt action and the matter was considered close. In December of 2021, CBSA's Human Resources Branch, the client for the work, requested the cancellation of the Butler AI task authorization, citing capacity and staffing issues. The TA was canceled, and I had no further contact with Butler AI. I will close on a personal note. I have worked in the technology field for over 25, 24 years, where I have dealt with highly sensitive files, operations, 
Five Eyes partnerships and both domestically and internationally. I understand the seriousness of ensuring that my actions remain bound to the professionalism demanded of a position in the federal public service. I have always upheld these values. Thank you for your time, and I'm willing to answer any questions you may have. Merci. Thank you, uh, Mr. Utano. Uh, Ms. Cousy, please, for six minutes. Thank you very much, Chair. On November 4th, 2019, two young entrepreneurs, Ratika Dutt and Amir Morv, were contacted by Christian Firth of GC Strategies regarding a Government of Canada project. On November 30th, Firth stated, I had a great chat with Cameron from CBSA, and they will act as fast as they can to get you a commitment. Over the course of our interactions, Firth repeatedly stated that the CBSA was very interested, said Ms. Dutt. Firth repeatedly communicated that Cameron McDonald would need to receive benefits as consideration for his role and influence in bringing Bottler, their company, to the Government of Canada. Firth stated that McDonald had then CBSA President John Oswoski's ear and that for Cameron, it's more than credit. I just want to be sure that he's taken care of. The principals met with McDonald several times. During a meeting called by McDonald on January 22nd, 2020 at the Marriott Spin Cafe, McDonald confirmed over drinks with the principals first statements regarding implementation of Bottler as a CBSA pathfinder for the entire Government of Canada wide implementation. During another in-person meeting called by McDonald on February 6, 2020, which was also attended by Antonio Utano and others, McDonald provided precise instructions and wording on how to pitch Butler to the president to ensure success. During the period, McDonald continued to provide intelligence to Firth on internal high-level executive meetings regarding Butler that were above his pay grade. McDonald provided direct instructions to be provided via Firth to Butler and the principals in order to guide interactions with other CBSA employees. McDonald also assigned work delegated to him by his superiors to Butler for completion at the last minute. Firth regularly asserted McDonald's influence and insisted that Butler provide whatever was asked by the CBSA, as Cam has a very big stick and can get what he wants. They know where he's going in the organization and how fast. Over multiple years of interactions with both Firth and the CBSA mid-management, it has become evident that conscious efforts are made by both parties to isolate and control the flow and narrative of information to the CBSA executive leadership. In this instance, the leadership is defined as the agency's president, vice president, and C-level executives. As early as two, November 2019, while Firth was actively communicating messages from McDonald to Butler, as discussed earlier, Firth stated that the Vice President Doan doesn't know that we've been communicating back and forth with Cameron. Firth, on behalf of McDonald, intervened on multiple occasions when Duff communicated important information with Oswoski that was targeted at the ministerial and deputy ministerial levels. Imagine that you are a young entrepreneur. You've been promised by your contact that the sky is the limit. Your concept, your technology can be implemented across the entire government of Canada because he knows the man. The man works together with your contact to create magic. The man who has contacts, who knows what he wants, the man who owns a chalet, or is it a cabin? Picture now that you enter into what you thought was a contract. You'll work hand in hand to create your idea across government. And what do you have to worry about? It's the government of Canada. But suddenly, things start to go wrong. You complete some work. You complete some more work. But you don't get paid. So you inquire. You do a little digging and you're concerned by what you find. So what do you do? You do the right thing. You file a complaint because when you file a complaint, it will be taken seriously. It will go through the right channels and it will be addressed because it's the government of Canada or will it? <clears throat> so Mr. Tanu, what did you do when you received the first misconduct report? 
Thank you for the question. Mr. Chair, the email from Ms. Dutt on September 27th was not a report, but rather an email. And it raised two issues, as I indicated in my opening statement. One is it was a delayed payment matter. And this, the other one was a concern about Butler's relationship with their partnership between GCS, Dalian Credits, and Butler AI. Nothing more. There were no allegations. I've actually provided the email in this package for reference. In fact, I was aware of the email when it first came in and knew that my team was addressing it. And within 24 hours, we successfully resolved the issues. So much so that Ms. Dunt said, excuse me, Ms. Dutt sent a follow-up email, which I also included in this package the next day, expressing her gratitude and giving the nature of the email and the prompt resolution. It wasn't necessary to forward it to my superiors or Ms. Or Gorman. Then why, Mr. Utano, is Ms. Dutt saying otherwise now that this was the first instance of her submitting that that uh, misconduct report in September of 2021, which which apparently you turned a blind eye to? So, first, I'd like to address the turning the blind eye. That's not true. The facts are. Right did here did in you the escalate briefings. it when you received that report? Did you did you bring it to the attention so to this to the uh, senior office? Pardon me, to the uh, vice president, based upon the the uh, procedure as outlined in in the senior office of internal disclosure. We so, are basically out of time. Unless you have a very quick yes or no, we'll have to get back to it. There were no allegations in the email. Thank you, Mr. Utano. Mr. Shawari, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Mr. McDonald, as a Director General of BTID, can you explain very briefly what is your role or what was your role? Yes, Mr. Chair, the, the role, do I have to click the button? The, no, you're okay. the, the role had uh, recently been created. Uh, there was a reorg in uh, the IT branch and they decided to go through with the reorg during the pandemic. Essentially, I had the responsibility for cloud functions. I had the responsibility for the mobile center of excellence. I had the responsibility for a prototype uh, and innovation section, and I had enterprise architecture amongst uh, Did others. that role entitle, uh, entitle the, the you meeting with vendors? Yes, but that definitely part of my role. CBSA is a mainframe shop. It's very old technology, and I was required to meet with vendors for new technologies. Can you tell me when was the first time you met with GC Strategy? Uh, the first time I ever met GC, well, GC Strategies, the first time would be almost uh, 2019, late 2018, possibly uh, early 2019. Circumstances around that meeting? Uh, Mr. Firth would have requested a meeting to talk about my business priorities and see what work was going on. I also, uh, Mr. Firth would send different packages of partnerships that he had been fostering throughout uh, private sector. Seems you had a relationship with GC Strategies. I had no relationship, okay, Mr. So Chair. It seemed there was a communication, there was open communication between your office and GC Strategies partner around the fact that they could come visit you and ask you what your priorities are and they share what it is. Mr. Chair, I met with IBM. I met with Microsoft. Yeah, I met I'm not interested on those. I'm interested yes, in GC I, I strategy. Had, I had open interactions Thank with you. many vendors. Okay. Um, uh, can you tell me when was uh, uh, when when your similar interaction started with Dalian and Cortex? Uh, around August 2019, uh, Coradix won a fair and competitive uh, contract. And that was the first time that you had an interaction with them? I, I may have added uh, interactions throughout my career with Dalian and Karatex, uh, but there was no no business that I'm aware what of. What was your role in uh, the 20, uh, I believe, $21.1 million open contract that was given to Dalian and Cortex? I was just the director general. There was a procurement team and a technology team that would have done all of the requirements and assessment and worked with our procurement team at CBSA. Who Did you recommend Dalian and Cortex, Cortex to the HR or to... CBSA. No, no I, I have no role That's in the fine. procurement. Uh, what was your, when, when did you become aware of Butler AI? Uh, Christian Firth sent me an email about Butler AI on November the 19th. Okay. It was a proposal that he submitted jointly branded with a proposal in yeah. it to do a pilot. Thank you. Is it customary for you to receive or any department to receive unsolicited all the proposal. time. Mr. Chair, we receive unsolicited proposals from the private sector all of the time. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Firth uh, and GC Strategies in particular, uh, I would say six a year I would get them, okay. but we get them from all types of vendors. So can you tell me pandemic, how would GC Strategies uh, know that, well, I assume they, they followed and they know about uh, C65, but how would they know 
to put a proposal, a substantive proposal uh, to you for the uh, AI application. I believe Mr. Firth was meeting with multiple departments. C-65 was coming down across the entire government. Uh, I received an unsolicited pro proposal. My understanding is that they went to like nine different departments and did the same thing. I couldn't tell you. Okay, did you, got, uh, did you at any time guide GC strategies or uh, Butler AI partners uh, in how to prepare for the presentation? Uh, to or did you guide them at any time, a real time basis as they were prepare as they were presenting these uh, these. Um... Yeah. Mr. Chair, I, I provided some evidence. I, I have a bilateral note from a meeting with my boss where I was told to meet with Butler and I was told to prepare them for an executive ready presentation. What does prepare them means to you, sir? It means they should have an understanding of the CBSA. They should have an understanding of the government context. They should understand what the business problem is that the CBSA is trying to solve. And at the time when they were presenting, they did multiple presentations. On December the 6th, I was not there for the VP presentation. Min Dong told this committee that he did not follow up and he did not write to Christian Firth, but he did. And I can submit that email in writing to the committee. But after that, he told me that they were very green that they presented themselves well, but they were long and they didn't present their technology. Okay. He had a problem with that. And I have Fair emails enough. that I've submitted to Did the you at any time uh, guide either GC strategy or um, Butler uh, to in any way uh, embellish their resume to fit the profile that we, we've no. heard that repeatedly that the resume was embellished and GC strategy has acknowledged that. Uh, was it at any time that you directly or indirectly communicated to GC strategy that we won uh, Butler or AI and if their resume fits, the job is uh, is theirs? No, in no time did that ever happen, sir. Okay. Um, what is what is a general IT supply and service agreement with Dalian and Cordex? Thank you for the question, Mr. Chair. At CBSA, they had what was called omnibus contracts. So the reason why it was $21 million is it was supposed to last four or five years. Uh, we, Antonio and I, started uh, within about six months of each other. We were borrowing other people's contracts to get work done that when we needed it. So we put in place our own contract. It was supposed to last four or five years. Dalian ended up winning that competition competitively. It was out on the street for vendors to bid on. Um, and, mm -hmm. and that's why that contract was around. Thanks, Mr. McDonald. Uh, Mrs. Pignola, uh, please. Merci beaucoup, Mr. Thank you very much, Chair. Mr. McDonald, in your opening remarks, you said you would have preferred Deloitte that was already doing business for the Government of Canada in terms of procurement. In the email written to Mr. Duan in the month of November 2023, you wrote that you found a Montreal-based company and you'd contacted GC Strategies to assess the options and go forward. My understanding is that subsequent to Mr. First's emails, that you made a sales pitch to Butler, or did you find Butler? And Mr. Mr. Chair, I was not there in 2023. I was already at Health Canada. When I wrote the email to Mindong, it was because I'd been asked for help for his attendance at this committee uh, a year previously. On October the 27th, 2023, a member of his inner circle called me and m'a appelé pour dire que Kelly Belanger... ...called me to say that Kelly Belanger and Min Dong had been discussing to, that they'd say the country that had been my decision to choose GC Strategies. August 28th, 2023, I got a call from Min Dong and he said that Minister Mendocino wanted somebody's head on a plate and said he didn't know if it would be the CFO, Mr. Moore, or him, the CIO of the department. And then he, he said he would say it was me. 
to the committee and I said it was not my decision. I had not taken the decision that I had put two options in front of him and I would answer if he said such a thing to the committee. Mr. Dung fell ill and did not appear before the committee. The, the Monday morning, I said to my former supervisor, Nancy Hamzawi, that I'd been threatened. Sorry, I don't know the word in French. She said, I should tell this to my supervisor. Tuesday morning, I said to my supervisor, and at that time it was the associate deputy minister, Heather Jeffries. Heather Jeffries called the CBSA to say that I had been threatened. And she met with me afterwards and told me I should not talk to CBSA nor to Mindong because of what was going on, that CBSA was aware of what was going on and that I should uh, withdraw and stand alone. And that's what I did. So the fact that there was two weeks when Mr. Mindong told this committee that he had not played any role in the decision making, you said he's wrong. He was the one who had imposed GC strategies. You wanted Deloitte. That was a lie uh, said to the committee. Everyone knows we have a team in back of us. It was his decision to take, not mine. I can also confirm with other people, because when he took the decision that Deloitte wouldn't be, it, he said it was because the president said nobody can work with Deloitte because of a project called Karn, which wasn't going well. So the evening he made the decision, I called the, the Deloitte partner to explain he had they had not been chosen because of problems with CARM. That evening, he told me that my colleague, Sandy Kiriskakis, who is the main lead for data at CBSA, had said the same thing. He, She had wanted to go with Deloitte too. In your email of November 19, well, in Christian First's email, actually, which he sent to you 19 November 2019, he calls you by your first name. Is it because he already knew you? And if so, where had you had contacts before 2019? I had contacts with Mr. First in 29. I had not been in contact with him from 2009 until around 2018, 2019. That's the first thing. The second thing, almost everyone calls me Cam or Cameron. That's normal. I'm someone rather informal with not just him, but everyone. Everyone calls me Cam. In your opening remarks, you said that you had not participated in the review of the decision on GC strategies. Who did participate? Mr. Tano was the... Uh, team leader, and he had a director uh, for cloud, also a manager from the mobile expertise center, and there must have been some five or eight other technicians and developers who conducted the analysis of products or companies or solutions that might be implemented. And the final solution to go with GC strategies was Mr. Dong, who took that decision? Yes, he took the decision to go with GC Strategies. He gave me the permission to leave to develop the solution. He knew that there were only two in the five days we had to make the decision. If he had not wanted to go with that decision, he could have asked for a time. Mr. Jones, please. Yeah, well, thank you very much um, for both of you for your testimony. You know, I just want to be clear from the outset, uh, this committee is not trying to destroy anybody's uh, career, especially hardworking public servants. But we need to get to the bottom of this, and we want to make sure that situations like this don't occur again. Now, Mr. Frith acknowledged that he mistakenly sent the Cordex, uh, to, well, he said Cordex, the wrong versions of Ms. Dutt and Mr. More of CVs in which he inflated their experience. Mr. McDonald, he said he went and did a back and forth. Was it a back and forth with you before he altered the, the resumes? Never, Mr. Chair. As the DG, I don't deal with any of the okay. CVs or security okay. clearances. It's done by a procurement team. 
Well, I appreciate that. Cordex submitted these documents, this this altered resume, which Mr. Frith admitted to, to Public Services and Procurement Canada, and subsequently he received a, a task authorization to deliver uh, Bot Botler software. To this extent that you're aware, would Ms. Dutt and Ms. Mr. Mora have been eligible to perform work for this task authorization had Mr. Frith not inflated their experience. And I'm giving Mr. McDonald that you know the alterations now that you've been following the committee and what took place. I, I'm i not aware of the particulars of the contract. I've been following these meetings, obviously. Well, they had seven years work experience and suddenly uh, it was inflated to-, to Mr. Uh, Chair, you know, I don't believe years. that they would have qualified let, let me, under the Sorry, let me, just send, let me just pause. Okay. I've got your time paused, uh, Mr. Uh, Johns. We have apparently bells ringing right now, unfortunately. Oh. Um, I assume we have 25 minutes. Can we, our members, can we? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to double check, but if it is, can we have uh, agreement to continue for uh, till five minutes before vote yeah. time? Thanks. Hmm? Good Lord. Thank you very so much. I'll, I'll go back to you, Mr. McDonald. Yeah, I've got your time uh, mm -hmm. restarted, Mr. John. Don't worry. Great. Um, so, you know, would they have been eligible to perform the work for the task authorization given, you know, um, if they had revealed their, the, the true experience that they put on their resume and sent once to Mr. Frith? I don't believe so under the categories that Mr. Firth presented them in. I, I don't validate that. That would have gone through PSPC. It would have gone through CBSA procurement and a procurement team. I I, I don't, I didn't see the CVs. I've never seen okay, the CVs. Okay. What, what, what gaps does this reveal in the process? Just trying to fix things here moving forward. Yeah, I, I guess like when I think about this from a technology standpoint and a user of contracts, I would think that some of the gaps that may exist would be what Mr. Wood brought up, that if you don't have the people attest to their CVs when they're submitted, then it is possible that something could be done in between their submission from okay. Okay. themselves to what about the, the government there, of Canada. Do you believe CBSA as a, as a purchasing organization responsible for ass assessing, you know, the, the contract securities programs finding should have a role in uh, that? So the CBSA, would have gotten this from PSPC. My understanding is that the CBSA does a secondary security check. Uh, they they don't just take what uh, PSPC gives them. So I don't think CBSA would have had any responsibilities in that regard. Okay, g given what you're hearing and you've heard Mr. Frist's testimony last week, I assume that you heard that on Thursday? Yes, sir. Yeah, so that he's admitted to altering the resumes. You're quoted as saying, let. Mr. Frith, let uh, let uh, Kirsten uh, do his magic in an email. Would you not send an email like that, knowingly uh, that he's altered resumes in a situation like this? M Mr. Chair, I, I don't believe I sent that in an email at all. I believe I read that for the first time in an article that was written okay. that that was written poorly. Uh, okay. I, you know, you might not be able to see this, Mr. Johns, but I took that article. I couldn't sleep. Okay. And I read out every single timeline that that man quoted and okay. represented it. And I just want to say to people, the CBSA did not, I'll stay here all day, Mr. John, so you don't need to worry about your time. We can give everybody six more minutes, okay? No, it, it doesn't we, work like that. We but... sat here, it yeah. was post-pandemic when we did any contracting at all. Yeah. When I was supposedly said that was February 2019 before the pandemic. I was talking about them being in a partnership, introduced to me as being in partnership and navigating through the complexities. Okay. I wasn't talking okay. about anything nefarious. I wasn't talking about anything no, bad. And I, I don't I don't I don't want to do that to you right now. I'm trying to fix this and and and, how, and I'm really glad that you're getting a chance to, to to tell your side of the story. Now, Ms. O'Gorman. She just wrote a letter to this committee. She's asked PSPC to temporarily suspend all CBSA contracts with GC Strategies, Cordex, Dalian. This is pretty serious. Would you agree that the CBSA wouldn't would be sending a letter like this um, if it wasn't serious, if there wasn't concerns, real concerns that are being brought forward here? And now I, I'm I'm not talking about your involvement. There has to be some substantial concerns. Do you not agree for Mr. Ms. O'Gorman to write this letter? Mr. President, I guess the only question I would say is what has CBSA learned in the last two weeks that they didn't already know? 
The CVSA had the email from September 27th that had no allegations. It wasn't a report of wrongdoing whatsoever. They, they sat here at this committee and didn't defend Mr. Utano or myself. Okay. Uh, well, I would I'm think the Mr. CVSA Utano should chat, speak for themselves. Pat, sorry, that okay. is our time, uh, Mr. Johns, perhaps in your next round. Mr. Uh, Brock for five minutes, please. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> so uh, to, to both uh, Mr. McDonald and Mr. Utano, although you've not been uh, sworn to tell the truth, uh, when you attend a uh, committee, the parliament, part of parliamentary privilege, there's a component that you are required to tell the truth. You are required to give us fulsome answers. So I just wanted to put that on the record because I know you have legal counsel present. Uh, both of you have independent legal counsel, is that correct? We have, the, we have legal counsel. Same, is same. it from the DOJ or, or is no, it private counsel? We weren't provided no, with any support from the federal government when this happened whatsoever. So okay. we had to go get our own support. That was probably a very wise move on your part because not only is the Auditor General expanding her review, which started off as a Rive can, but because of the story from the Globe and Mail in early October, uh, her concerns about the same players and the same government agencies, she's expanded that uh, review. But more importantly, the RCMP are investigating, not a Rive can, they are investigating the CBSA, all the employees, all the executives, including both you, Mr. McDonald, and you, you Mr. Utano, as well as other government agencies, the three companies at, at issue right now, GC Strategy, Strategies, Valiant, and Coridex, and as to what truly transpired as to whether or not there was some criminality, all right? So I can understand why you'd want to have counsel. So putting that aside, you uh, both in your opening statements, you were very quick to uh, impugn the, in, the uh, credibility of the whistleblowers, I call them the whistleblowers, the brave two entrepreneurs from Bottler AI, and you were prepared to actually throw under the bus the press, and particularly the Globe and Mail. So I just want you to, to be aware, sir, because you use the phrase a lot. Well, these are allegations, and I'm here to tell the truth. I'm going to give you the facts. What you need to be aware of, sir, is that the Globe and Mail that started this investigation analyzed thousands and thousands of pages of documents released pursuant to access to information requests that came from the CBSA. Globe also reviewed extensive documentation compiled by the entrepreneurs themselves, including contracting records and audio recordings of their conversations with IT consultants and both you, Mr. McDonald, and you, Mr. Utano. So we have hours and hours of conversations that are actually recorded. So in my view, these aren't allegations. This is this is fact. This is evidence. Of, I'm not. I haven't asked you a question yet, sir. Okay. This is my time, and, and this is how I'm going to frame the question ultimately to you. So I wanted you to be aware of that, sir. Okay. So. When we go back to taking a look at why uh, Butler would, would have the need to, uh, to record you, um, it's very, very clear early on when you take a look at all the stories is they thought it extremely unusual that it was the CBSA, you in particular, sir, who sought them out and sought them out not directly by yourself or one of your employees, but rather a middle person, Christian Firth from GC Strategies, because their work previous to this particular engagement was directly with the Department of Justice. They had civil servants, they reached directly out to Bottler, they did the work, they got paid. There was no middleman, no ghost contractor, like we like to refer to GC Strategies. So that I wanna to bring to your attention, sir. Now, you also claim that it wasn't you who initiated the concept of, of CBSA uh, engaging with Bottler, that it was actually Firth's idea. So, you know, Firth testified last week. Firth is on record saying that it wasn't his idea. It was your idea that you had researched it and you wanted him to approach uh, Bottler. So both sets of facts can't be true at the same time. 
you're saying something completely opposite. So who's lying to committee, Mr. Firth or yourself? Mr. Chair, I don't believe Mr. Firth said that, and I think you can check his transcripts. I think Mr. Firth said that he reached out to Butler after speaking to a number of CIOs around town. He had talked to me and that he had understood that Bill 65 was important. At the time, there were news clips that CBSA had undergone a whole bunch of sexual harassment claims, and that's why I told him it was one of my priorities. I want to bring your attention, since everybody is talking about Thank you. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't want to hear I'm about anything else, sir. Because that is your, you that you is your time, my Mr. Brock. Is my time up? Your time is up, I'm afraid. Thank you. Mr. Baines, please, for five. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, Mr. McDonald and Mr. Utano, for joining us today. Um, you said you preferred Deloitte. I wanted to just sort of find out Mr. Doan's role in all of this process. He talked about, we asked him a question. He said, I have a team that makes a decision. Um, and then I asked how how many people are part of this team. He said 1,400. So I'm like, or 1,400 people making this decision? Or, and then he said, well, there's six directors. And then I think we've asked for uh, some names on who those people are. So like, you prefer Delo Deloitte. And uh, what was the process used sort of to select GC strategies and what was Mr. Doan's role in all that? I can start, maybe Mr. Utano can help me. They're doing an and, and or the team no that worries. he they're, mentioned. They're, yeah. they're doing an assessment. There's three or four companies, some of them big, some of them we already worked with, the CBSA. Some of them are outsourced, some of them are insourced. Uh, I see one floating to the top. I'm like, this isn't good. I also see about 100 requests coming in. It's the middle of the pandemic. That's why we were only given five days to do all of the options assessment. HR is coming, commercial is coming, travelers is coming. I wanted to bring in some Clydesdales, Deloitte, to be able to help out. I worked in evenings with Deloitte and the partner, and he put in an innovation team, and I told them the same requirements that the technical team had to work with. They came up with a concept. And Mr. Utano and his development team came up with a concept. On March 24th, we, he sent the options for GC strategies, and I sent the option for Deloitte into Mr. Doan. Subsequent to that, I had a meeting with Mr. Doan where he told me that Deloitte was not an option because of CARM. If I can add, can I add, Mr. Chair? Can I add to that? So the, the technical team, the Mobile Center of Excellence, looked at a lot of other options, but the, the theme around it was in search capacity. They wanted to participate in the development. They saw that was a better approach and long term. And so they worked in developing this concept, forwarded it to me, which then I forwarded directly actually to uh, my CIO, Mendon, directly, and, and then left it there for decision and uh, reference. So when you said they, who, who's they? The internal uh, team? Yeah. So we have a tech we had a technical team. We had a very small mobile center of excellence team who was just getting off the ground and working in mobile. And so, and so when this pandemic hit and Public Health Agency of Canada came to us in urgency requesting this compli I, I'll call this this capability for mobile to deal with the contact tracing, we had to look for options. And so we went to our teams and asked them for options. This one surfaced as a viable option. It was based on a few things one of a few, but security, the ability to provide a secured, uh, protected the cloud, the ability to have secured resources, the skill sets, et cetera. And so when they took that into consideration, a viable option that came to the to the top, if you will, was this proposal. And so again, I just forwarded it on to the uh, CIO. And then the CIO makes the, then who finally well, at makes that point, the decision? Yeah. The CIO would have had two proposals, two viable proposals. We didn't which just were, two. which were, Mr. Deloitte, Mr. Your, your uh, Mr. package, when, you, yes. when everybody gets their packages, they'll see there's a Deloitte proposal that was sent by me. There's a GC Strategies proposal that was sent by Mr. Utano. I had a meeting with Mr. Doan afterwards. Mr. Doan told me that Deloitte was not an option. We talked about the fact that there would need to be a sole source contract. I have an email in my package on March 24th that I sent Mr. Doan, letting him know that we would have to talk about methods of supply and suppliers because we didn't have any contracts in place at the time of the pandemic. And we would need resource categories that were outside of what we had within the Dalian contract. We had that discussion. And what was, and was the response told, to that? I was told, you need to do what you need to do. These are exceptional circumstances. I trust you to get it done. 
the whole thing was around whether or not we could have a release within a month or not. In your time at CBSA on on the many projects, did you use GC strategies to source talent like um, all the time? You said they brought forward six at a, almost. Um, uh, so we, we use six a year, sorry, yes. Mr. Chair, we used primarily our general IT services contract, which was with Dalian. Our understanding is that Dalian has subcontracted various resources through GC Strategies and other companies. I think my understanding is that's their modus operandi for the most part of how they work. So there were GC Strategies represented subcontracted resources working secret cleared within the CBSA when the pandemic hit. They were the ones working with the technical team that helped to develop the GC strategies proposal. And did you ever encourage Sorry, contractors? Mr. Baines, to... that's okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Vignola for two and a half, please. May I some comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I've been listening and I'm trying to understand how does procurement work and how did it work not just regarding Butler AI, but concerning Butler AI, and I think this is the best example I give, you have uh, Dalian Koradix, who are essentially two fellows who find computer technicians, programmers, developers, network architects, and so forth, and they provide those resources to the Government of Canada. Then you have GC strategies who do exactly the same thing. They go find uh, experts in IT. Then you have one who uses the other to identify contacts. And every time there's a profile, there's, you know, some, if someone gets a, a minimum, uh, one to 15%, the other takes a minimum at 15%. And so we ended up paying money over money to get employees. Mr. Utano, I mean, I find this absolutely enormous. Mr. Utano, in your role and responsibilities, there, is there nobody in your team who could have been capable of developing an application? Uh, there's no specialization and instead of paying out millions? to four guys? The, the answer is no. The level of complexity that was developed for the mobile application, and I just want to remind the, the committee that it has progressed to what you see today. It, it started with a, a basic digital form, and we were yeah. able to do that internally. It then progressed to pre-border, at-border, post-border, transactional, and holding on to very private information of Merci. travelers to Canada. Don't Thank you. So. That capability didn't exist at the time. So did the government be, be, you know, take action to fill that void? Because these applications are essentially the modern day tool and the tool of tomorrow. I mean, we have to stop being paying out millions to one subcontractor after another. It's our time, though. Perhaps you can save the floor in the next round with uh, Ms. Vignola. Mr. Johns, please, for two and a half. So, um, Mr. Utano, CBSA's policy on internal investigations into alleged or suspected employee misconduct requires you to provide any misconduct reports to your vice president, which was uh, Ming Dong. Did you provide the September 27th, 2021 Botler report to Mr. Dong, Internal Affairs, or any other supervisor? Thank you for the question. I'm, I'm going to say it again. So, the email from Ms. Dutt on September 27th that I received was not a report but rather an email that raised two issues. One was a payment delay, and the second was a concern about Botler's relationship with their partnership between GCS, Dallin Caradix, and Botler AI. Nothing more. There were no allegations in that email. In fact, Mr. Johns, I provided the actual email in the package, okay. and if you look to, to tab 23, uh, you'll, you'll see the actual email. Um, and then I was also, I want to just confer, uh, confirm for the committee that I was aware of the email when it came in. I knew that my team was addressing it. And within 24 hours, they successfully, we successfully resolved the issues. So much so that Ms. Dutt sent a follow-up email the next day expressing her gratitude. Given the nature of the email so, so, and the okay. prompt resolution, so, so it wasn't here, necessary. Here's the thing. To the next day, Ms. Ms. Daly then uh, ordered uh, a payment 
to Butler and, and Butler got uh, a payment. Can you explain why that happened so quickly? Part of the resolution, thank you for the question, Mr. Chair. So part of the resolution was that we reached out to our prime contractor with whom we have the contract with, Dying Karatics, and reminded them, quite frankly, that when we pay an invoice, we expect them to pay their employees. Mm -hmm. And so that was the resolution. Uh, the Dying Karatics confirmed that they were going to make that payment. They were apologetic, and then okay. the matter was closed. You you put forward in your statement, you didn't get a chance to finish it. You said, I've lost faith in the public service and those who, in a position of authority, had the opportunity to uphold these same values. Yet here at the committee, given the platform to do so, chose not to. Who are you identifying there? And is there anyone that's come forward to testify at this committee that you feel has not been upfront and told the truth? Just a brief answer, please. Yeah, real quick. The opportunity to access the email was there, Mr. Johns. I was just, I was disappointed that that email that September 27th was not accessed and presented at this committee when our when our leadership uh, came here to uh, to speak to the committee. Mr. Tano, Mr. Barrett, please for five. Was GC Strategies named in any legal documentation for the work done with Butler, Mr. McDonald? I wouldn't be aware of any of the legal work done that you're referring to, uh, Mr. Chair. I, I apologize. In, in, in the official documentation for the project, was GC Strategies listed? The only official documentation that I am aware of that I had privy to was a task authorization for a feasibility study. There was never mention of a pilot. There was never mention of GC Strategies whatsoever. Was GC So GC Strategies was not named on the task authorization? Neither is Botler, uh, Mr. Chair. But they were uh, subcontractors. No, the on the task authorization is Dalian Enterprises and Karatix. I am not privy to or aware or provided with any subcontracting arrangements. I am not uh, involved in any of the discussions that take place between third party partnerships. So you would never know that uh, were it not for the public reporting on this, that payment to Botler flowed through GC Strategies. I and left GC this. Strategies then took a percentage for, for their... I, I left the CBSA before any of the deliverables or payments would have been made. I wouldn't be aware of how the payment structure or their agreements are uh, anyways. On what date did you complete your time at CBSA? I think it was May the 3rd. I got pulled over pretty quickly and I didn't go back to my official records, but it was around May the 3rd that I started at Health Canada. So after... Uh, Botler asked CBSA uh, to stop payments because of misconduct. Uh, Diane Daly of CBSA demanded payments go through GC Strategies. Is that correct? I'm not privy to those emails. I wasn't around at that time, Mr. Okay. Chair. So you've said that uh, you're not friends with Mr. Firth of GC Strategies. Is that correct? That is correct. And you didn't have much to do with him? I didn't. I've met Mr. Firth three times out of an office place in my entire life and it, you see it, it appears that you placed a high amount of trust in him to deliver on a project that you deem to be of exceptionally high importance that's that's the appearance of it why why mr chair the only thing i can tell you about my experience and the only time i had worked with mr firth before Butler was arrive can and i can tell you that the consultants that he brought to the table delivered and I recognize that not everybody likes the policies of ArriveCan, but we delivered and delivered and delivered. And that year that I was on, we never missed a deliverable once. In, in fairness, I would say you delivered a very expensive price tag to Canadians, and you delivered a lot of Canadians um, into quarantine who um, did not meet the, uh, the necessity to have been ordered into quarantine. They were illegally detained. So those, those are also outcomes for, for that project as well. We've heard one witness who was um, caught lying to this committee. The committee that was on, on full display. And we've heard uh, assertions um, that there have been others. So we see that there's, uh, based on the allegations that we've heard from Butler, that there's a network of people not following uh, the, the, the rules, that they're breaking the law. That's why there's an RCMP investigation. Um, and you've pushed yourself uh, quite hard against this so that you're not uh, um, associated with it. Um, I'm very curious about the motives of um, of everyone involved, about the people who would be lying. And so uh, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. I'd like you to respond as quickly as possible, please. Um, was Mr. Firth 
honest and truthful in all of his presentation and responses to committee based on uh, what you know? No. Was Mr. I'm going to circle back to that. Was Mr. Doan truthful and no. fulsome and honest? Was Mr. Osowski truthful and honest in his presentation to this committee? I couldn't say more than I don't know that he really represented or stuck up for the people that w I would have expected him to. Was Miss O'Gorman truthful and fulsome and honest? I wouldn't think so. Would you be able to detail for this committee in writing um, the the areas where they were dishonest and not fulsome in their replies? Yes. Okay. And would you be able to undertake to provide that to co the committee in uh, what's the standard time, Chair? Uh, would you be able to provide it within a couple of days, two I, days? I believe, uh, Mr. Chair, you'll have a lot of it in my submission already, but I will undertake to do it within 72 hours if that's acceptable. I appreciate that. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Mr. McDonald, Mr. Kuzmirchuk, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. McDonald, in, in the brief that we had received, um, it states uh, Butler AI wanted to circumvent the procurement and contracting structure and contract directly with the CBSA. Can you explain that? Mr. Yutana would be better to explain oh, it because that okay. happened after I left. Oh, sure. Thanks. Thank you for the question. So I've actually provided those emails, those, those subsequent emails after resolution. Uh, Ms. Dutt had comments in those emails asking if we could uh, engage in a direct contract, to which we replied, you have to, we have to go for a whole new contracting process. Her um, dissolution or removal from the partnership is totally up to her but we would have to go to CBSA's contracting and procurement uh, uh, department group to even begin those conversations. But they would qualify, right? Is that correct as a vendor? So I'm not the procurement expert, I'll be completely honest. Um, since the, the, there's a separation of roles and responses and duties, I would, I would lean to my, to the, my procurement yeah, uh, colleagues in that. Yeah, Mr. Chair, if I could help just the member understand. My understanding is that in quarter three of 2021, at some point, Butler did qualify on an invitation to qualify for AI companies, but that's not a standing offer, and that doesn't mean you qualify to work with the federal government. It means you can qualify for the RFP process. So it would be an invitation to qualify for RFPs. Uh, it wouldn't necessarily make you certified with PSBC for a standing offer for the government just to go give you a contract and do work directly. You couldn't just grant that contract directly from CBSA. There'd have to be a whole new process around it. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, I understand that there's, whenever contracts are, are issued, there are layers of approvals, I imagine. Um, can you speak to uh, a little bit in terms of what layers? It's not that President Asofsky just writes a check or Mr. Utano or Mr. McDonald writes a check to Butler AI, there are layers of approvals. Can you speak to some of those layers? Were they implemented in this case, knowing that it was a national emergency? Um, were those still applicable in this case? It's important to understand this. As the technical authority on the contracts, which is something that the articles and Butler got wrong, we are the technical authorities. We are not the contract authorities. So we are allowed to sign off that we have the funding and the scope. We are not allowed to sign off or push the button to execute any type of contract or negotiate contracts or do any type of invoicing. At the CBSA, within us, there was a controllership, which is under the CFO area. They are responsible for expediting contracts. If it's above a certain threshold, it goes over to PSPC and PSPC expedites it. But that's the genesis, I think, of some of the problems that were ex exposed here. They call kept calling us contract authorities, which we are not. We were never in a position to put these contracts in place and make contracting decisions. You basically state whether the horses can finish the race. Is that correct? You sort of give an opinion on whether the horses if, in front of you we can picked finish the race. wrong horses yeah. we would be told we couldn't use them okay yes okay. okay gotcha um what is the relationship what type of uh relationship in in this process 
did you have with PSPC? What role did PSPC play in your con in your day to day conversations on this particular contract? Perhaps I'll start off AI. and then sure. move it to Thanks Antonio. Sure. Uh, when the pandemic hit, um, we needed help r really badly. Uh, we started working with PSPC almost immediately. I wouldn't say that we cut the controllership uh, finance area out, but we just went direct because we knew that we needed their help. Um, within a few months, we had started to work with them on developing a memorandum of understanding where we could help pay them to get some access to their resources to help us do contracting. Maybe from there, I'll pass it over to Mr. Gitano to finish off because he would have worked with them for another two years uh, during the process. Thank you for the question. And if you could also answer whether ultimately PSPC approved those contracts. So all contracts for RATICAN were ultimately reviewed and approved uh, by PSPC going through our CBSA contracting uh, team. Uh, when Mr. McDonald left, I continued those conversations on those weekly bilats. We were meeting with them weekly because the pandemic was continuously changing, the requirements were changing. We wanted to make sure they were always apprised of the situation and the operational demands. And so we always sought their advice and their guidance before, uh, ask, before moving on any sort of, uh, or advancing any sort of uh, procurement or uh, work. So that's the contract, as the contracting authority, we engage them all the time. You, you delivered a, an app uh, that basically was utilized 60 million times by Canadians, kept Canadians safe, kept things moving across the border. Uh, and you delivered it on time, on budget. Is that correct, Mr. Rotano? That's correct. Okay, that is correct. The Conservatives wanted yes, to that use... Is, sorry, Mr. Kasperchuk. <laughs> we'll have plenty of time afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Before we get to start with Mr. Genoas, Mr. McDonald, um, Mr. Barrett was asking you if you could detail some of these issues. I know you mentioned they were in your package, but because we will not have them translated in time, would you be able to pull those items out and list them separately in a smaller amount so we can get them translated faster? Uh, or Mr. Chair, the, the clerk has been fantastic. If, if somebody could just write down what it is they want from me, I will undertake to get back to the committee as soon as I possibly can. We will do so. Thanks very much. Mr. Genos. Thank you, Chair. GC Strategies clearly got a very good deal here, so it really matters in terms of getting to the bottom of this who made the decision to hire GC Strategies. Now, I understood in your opening t uh, statement, both of you said that Min Doan was responsible for that decision. Is that Was my understanding correct? Yes. yes. You're both nodding? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Doan very clearly and very explicitly testified before this committee uh, when he appeared on October 24th uh, that they were investigating who, trying to find out who, and to his knowledge, they weren't aware who. Uh, so to be clear, in, based on your testimony, Mr. Doan was lying when he appeared before the committee. I don't understand, uh, Mr. Chair and honorable members, how they could be investigating for a year who made the decision on a ride can. It's, it's quite clear. And if they had asked anybody on our team, they would have said the same thing. Okay. Can you uh, uh, provide us with additional documentation to support your version of events? And are there documents that we should request from Mr. Doan that would verify your version of events? No, uh, the only thing that I haven't provided and I can provide the committee with is uh, some names. I won't say them here, but I can provide some names that can substantiate uh, what I've said here today. And in your packages, uh, I, I can pull them out if you would like. Okay. Mr. Utano can also okay. pull his out. We're at a bit of a disadvantage because they haven't been able to be distributed yet. And I, I understand the circumstances around okay. trans translation, but you, you, you would undertake to provide to the committee in, in writing, uh, but not in public, the names of individuals who can verify your version of events. Yes. Okay. Um, you sort of implied that Mr. Doan uh, wanted to make you the fall guy for what happened here. Um, would that be a, a correct interpretation of your version of events that that um, that he made a decision um, and that someone somewhere decided that you two were going to be the ones made made to wear this and and therefore um, not supported by the department and and made to appear responsible for the decision. Is that your version of events? Yes, Mr. Chair. I felt incredibly threatened on that phone call with Min Doan on October the 28th. Uh, I talked to my old supervisor and then my boss on Monday and Tuesday morning uh, following that. I think Mr. Utano can tell you that he had a very similar experience with Mr. Doan as well. 
So uh, you had also referred to a, a, a conversation that was relayed to you, and maybe it was the same one in which uh, it was reported that Minister Mendicino wanted someone's head on a plate. Can you just explain further why and for what uh, and whose whose head he wanted? That, that was my discussion, and that was the day that Mindon threatened me. Uh, the discussion started off with Mindon telling me that uh, within the CBSA, there was a lot of work going on to prepare for OGO. This is almost a year ago. Yeah. And uh, I believe Mr. Mendicino was not happy. Mr. Mendicino wasn't there when Arrive Can kicked off and when all of this was going on, but there was a lot of news about Arrive Can. Min was worried that either he or Jonathan Moore were going to get fired. So he was talking about somebody's head on a platter. And he said, because Jonathan Moore had made a whole bunch of mistakes from an accounting perspective, talking about how much Arrive Can cost, it could go his way or it could go Mr. Doan's way because Mr. Doan was the CIO at the time. And then he turned, turned, we were on the phone, but he stopped the conversation and he just said, you know, Cam, if I have to, I'm going to tell the committee that it was you. Right. He offered me the opportunity to say that it was Mr. Utano or tell Mr. Right. Doan that it was Utano and myself, uh, to which I said, if you do that, I will have to respond. And we ended the conversation. That night is the night that I wrote him the notes. I stayed up until about three o'clock in the morning trying to figure out how I could find some way to meet in the middle. And that's why the notes were written exactly that way, so that Mr. Doan could come to this committee and present without. So you're referring to, to the email you sent, and I was going to ask you about that. So, so essentially, you you were trying to be honest. You, you were tr what you're telling us is you were trying to be honest, but also avoid giving the direct answer that you've given. The I committee was today. trying to give him something that he could work with. He told me he had never been to committee before. Right. I believe his first appearance was two weeks ago. Yeah, he was very nervous about it. And I tried to give well, no, him some No help. wonder. I mean, the, the implication of what you're saying is that he made the choice to hire GC Strategies uh, and had had some reason for doing so. And also that he came and told the committee that he didn't make the decision, didn't know who made the decision. And essentially, you're telling us that someone's head was going to be on a plate because because somebody got rich, somebody benefited from, from this. Someone's head was going to be on a plate and he wanted it to be yours and not his. I believe Mindon made the decision to go with GC Strategies out of the fact that he had been told that he could not use Deloitte. Deloitte was in the timeout penalty box, so to speak. Who? And who, who told him that they sorry. were in the penalty box? My very, very briefly. My understanding is that that came from above. Did you, can, can you, can you sorry, clarify what you mean by above? Ingenuous. Sorry, that is okay. our time. Mr. Uh, Perlowski, please. Um, Mr. McDonald, you said you felt threatened by Mr. Doan. Um, what, what was the threat? Well, first of all, threat of employment. Uh, I had moved on to Health Canada. I had already been gone off the project for a year and a half. In my opening statements, I think I told the committee that when I left, I delivered a costing and it was $6.3 million. And now all of a sudden in the news and everything else, they're talking about $55 million. Uh, they were talking, Mr. Doan was talking about people getting fired. I, I also didn't want my name to come out at this committee. I worked really, really hard during the pandemic. And just the thought of being blamed for something that people were painting as bad when I, we, we did everything that we could to respond during the pandemic, the whole thing was just a horrible interaction. Uh, it seems like the horrible interaction continues with this committee. Um, I, I'm not normally on this committee, and the committees I'm on aren't quite this kind of inquisitorial process. But one thing it seems to me, and kind of looking at the fairness of this, um, some people are, are given like five minutes to ask a question. You're given one minute to respond. It's your reputation that's at stake here. So I'm giving you the time to respond to some of the questions that perhaps you didn't have time to respond to. And I think specifically you were referring to the Globe and Mail article about the RCMP probe that you had your big sheet of paper about the timelines and what was wrong. Do you, do you want to just take a bit of time to expand on some of those things that you think um, they got wrong? Sure. I, I, I guess, Mr. Chair, the reason why I, I did a timeline that was linear was because when I read the article, uh, there were just so many dates that kept on popping up and sometimes they had the year and sometimes they didn't have the year. Uh, I feel that I've been misrepresented by Butler as having them pressure to work with Christian Firth. They, I, they were introduced to me by Christian Firth. They went around town presenting together as partners. They presented to my VP without me being there as partners. My VP responded calling them the team. Uh, I, I guess I, I feel kind of attacked after the fact 
from a baller perspective, uh, even even with Mr. Utano, the, the email that they're saying that they made these allegations, you guys will get a copy of it. I don't understand why Butler didn't provide a copy to the committee when they started off, because any normal common sense person that reads this email will know there are no allegations in it. They certainly didn't mention me on September 27th. And then all of a sudden on Twitter, they're dropping all these audio clips that are clearly edited. They're clearly put together in a way that provides anybody that listens to them with uh, a focus that just doesn't exist. And so I, I guess from my vantage point, uh, Mr. Chair and, and members of this committee, I don't think Butler was was treated unfairly. I'll make one final point because you gave me the time and I really appreciate it. I've been trying to make this a couple of times. When the Crown has a contract with anybody, there's a task authorization. I've provided it in my package and I think it's really important for members to understand this. What Butler did, the contract was for a feasibility study in six parts. So in other words, we're paying for somebody to refurbish the kitchen. They went out back and built a swimming pool and a jungle gym and a garage and wanted to charge the federal government hundreds of thousands of dollars for doing it. The Crown wouldn't pay for that. The Crown pays for what's in the contract. And if people went through the ATIP and watched all and read all the documents, they would see it says a discovery plan, a feasibility study, a fit gap analysis report, a pilot plan and metrics and, a, and an executive summary. Nowhere in there does it say a pilot. And it's a chatbot. Why would the federal government ever pay $26 million a year for a chatbot? I'll stop there, Mr. Chair, but I'm, 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 I take my reputation seriously. I have worked awfully hard to earn one, and I feel it's been sullied by some of the things that have been said at this committee, in the news, and by Butler themselves. If I have any time remaining, Mr. Utano, I give you the same opportunity to respond to anything you haven't had a chance to. Real quick, so I take allegations very seriously, and if they are presented to me, I will I will action them. And that even September 27th, there was no allegations. And I just want to read the re reply from Ms. Dutt. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for your prompt action and response. It is much appreciated. Please accept my sincerest apologies for all of this inconvenience to yourself and the CBSA. You have all been nothing short of amazing to work with, and I'm so sorry you had to come to this. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, Ms. McNola for two and a half, please. Merci. Thank you very much. Mr. Utano, just in a few seconds, did the Government of Canada take the necessary measures to have amongst its uh, officials people that were capable of developing the applications? Um, my priority in was always and now and continues to be to develop our resources and our employees. At the just before the beginning of the pandemic, that was what the intention was of, of starting small with a, okay. a team called the Mobile Center of Excellence and bringing in the resources not to do, but to teach and learn. Okay. Est-ce que, est que on a les res Do we now have the resources to develop? It takes years and years to develop the necessary capabilities to develop this type of software. The Arrive can. Uh, was very complicated. Thank you. Mr. McDonald, Mr. Utano, having listened to you speak, it is my impression that there is a certain culture of silence, harassment, and bullying inside CBSA. Am I mistaken? Perhaps I could begin and Mr. Utano could follow. Yes, to a certain extent, yes. I do not think it is always as serious, but when it does happen, people do not necessarily have a door to knock on to actually talk to someone to get help. And in our case, it was clear there's some information that was there, but the people were not there for us. Does that happen frequently? Is it frequent? So in, in my career, this is the first type of uh, events that have damaged uh, my character, my integrity, and my trust in, in, some, in some leadership. Um, I don't know what the right response is, if it's frequent or not. I've never had this experience. 
Oui, je vous remercie euh, beaucoup. Thank you so very much. I have many other questions, but it'll have to stop here. Thank you, uh, Ms. Spignola. Uh, Mr. Johns, please. Mr. McDonald, do you have any idea why Deloitte was in the penalty box? Uh, Mr. Chair, my understanding from the discussion uh, was there, there's a big project called the commercial uh, CARM, car, CARM uh, something about risk management, commercial uh, uh, assessment risk management project. Uh, I believe it's about $350 million or so, uh, and it wasn't going well at the time. So um, I, I, I believe. What does that mean? Uh, I believe it was uh, not on time and not on budget in terms of where the project milestones were supposed to be. And so uh, the, the company had been put on timeout. Uh, no work was to be done, even, even though there was a global pandemic. Mr. Don threatened you. Exactly, can you clarify why he would threaten you, what the threat was? So uh, I got a phone call on, I think it was the 27th, from a men member of his inner circle. I can provide her, her name and information to corroborate this. Um, she told me that uh, Kelly Boulanger had told her not to call me and uh, that Min had been particularly directing his attention towards saying that I was the one that had made the decision that it would be GC Strategies, even though the entire team that was helping to brief Min Doan all the way had not said that. Um, so when I talked to Min Doan the next day, he had already asked me to help him with the committee. So this is why it was a bit jarring for me. Uh, he was pretty upset. At times he was almost crying. At times he was almost yelling. Uh, he basically said that somebody's head was going to be on a platter and he started between him and Jonathan and then he quickly switched it to say he was going to say that it was me that made the decision if, uh, if, if, they, if he was asked. But he made the decision. Is that correct? He made the decision? Yes, he made the decision. I brought him two decisions. He took one away and told me to go and I went. But he, he knew came it was to our committee strategies. and said it wasn't him that made the decision. Uh, Mr. Mr. Johns and honorable members of this committee, I have members of my team that came here to support me. There's, if the CBSA had have even just asked my team, they would have known who made the decision. There was, it was clear. Everybody in government knows a DG wouldn't have made a decision like that. And and Mr. Doan, uh, I I don't know. He he was the one that got a non-advertised appointment. I I competed successfully in an open competition for my my EX4. Uh, Mr. Doan, when he was asked that question, he, he answered it a little bit differently, and you'll have to ask him how he was promoted. Thank you uh, both. Uh, Mr. Genius, I understand you're starting off. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I suspect there will be general agreement uh, of this committee in light of the testimony we've heard today to ask Mr. Doan to come back as soon as possible for a full two hours by himself. Is there agreement on that point? Thank you. Um, and I think probably as soon as possible, Chair, but we, we give you that discretion as always. Um, Mr. McDonald, uh, I think it's very important that you said that Mr. Doan heard from above that Deloitte was in the penalty box um, and that that is why GC Strategies was was selected. Uh, that phrase does does um, include some euphemisms that I, that I do want clarity on though. What precisely do you mean by from above? Doan was the vice president and CIO of the CBSA. There was only one person who was above him. My understanding is that all the VPs had been told that they could not work with Deloitte until the CARM project was back on track. So above him within the public service would have been, would have been the president, um, but above that is the political level. So I did not understand it to be a political decision, but if you're gonna be calling Mindon, I'm sure you can ask him what he meant. Okay. Um, would, would anyone at the political level have been involved in these discussions as far as you know? Uh, not as far as I know. You, you, you weren't the, in rooms with, where they were? Uh, I was okay. in, for a RiveCan, I was in one meeting with the minister's office. They asked me if it was secure uh, and they asked me if it was scalable, to which I answered in the affirmative and that was only one meeting. At, at what stage in the process was that meeting with the minister? Very early, like very beginning. Was that before or after the GC strategies was selected? I. 
don't know that GC Strategies was selected at the time. It would have probably been concurrently okay. when we were kind of going. GC Strategies was not brought up. Okay. No contracting was brought up. They, they just wanted to make sure that it was secure because we were going to be collecting. But, it, but if they were asking, is it secure? Presumably they were asking that in the context of a particular application or company. No, it was because we were taking away paper and okay. we were going to be using digital means. Okay. It, it, it was sort of... I wonder if you could follow up on on that point regarding the timeline. So, uh, what what do you um, mean by, by penalty box? You mean they they weren't to receive any contracts? That's yes, what penalty that's, box is. That, that was my understanding. Again, Mr. Okay. Dunn can explain. Yeah, it is um, sort of surprising to me that you would have this kind of informal process of companies being in the penalty box. Uh, and therefore not getting any contracts, which means other companies get them automatically. Like, is, is this normal where, where sort of at a, someone just decides this, this company or that company is not going to receive any contracts for a while and we're going we're gonna to give them to whoever else bids? I, w I would say no, Mr. Chair. I wouldn't think it was normal at all. But I will, uh, I will preface that by saying this was like the second week of the pandemic and right. there was craziness everywhere. Uh, the, the reason that the sole source and the national security exemptions exist is for emergencies. And this was declared a national emergency. In terms of the decisions around why we could or could not use a particular company such as Deloitte, uh, that was not uh, my decision to make. Okay, in terms of the time I had left, um, I do want to probe the point you referred to just at the end about, you said Mr. Doan got a non-advertised appointment. Um, there was sort of an implication in what you said um, and I, I would like you to provide a little bit more on on that. Um, are there are there certain relationships he has uh, uh, access points? Uh, what's I, uh, do you think do you think his appointment uh, broke protocol in some way? Um, what, what what were you sort of getting at with with that comment? Well, Mr. Chair, the only thing I can say is that uh, it was uh, alluded to or inferred that I had benefited because of a rye pan at this committee and that I had gotten a promotion because of my work. And I wanted to make sure this committee was aware that I fully competed in a competitive process that was open and fair and that I had resulted as being um, in a pool and I was selected afterwards. Mr. Utano as well fully competed in a process. The others can speak for themselves as to how they are selected, but my my, my base assumption is that uh, when I left uh, the CBSA, um, Mr. Doan was in EX4, right. and he was promoted uh, to an EX5, uh, as well as others were okay. promoted in the agency. And, and just finally, to put, put a, a, a sharp point on the process of selecting GC strategies. So Min Doan chose, and part of why he made that choice is because Mr. Ososki, who was the president at the time, uh, had told him Deloitte's a no. Is that, is that? I will let Mendon answer for why he discounted Deloitte. I told you already what I heard from Mr. Doan. I brought my boss two options. I came out with one and the uh, decision to go. I went, he was aware that I went forward with it, obviously, because we built a Rive can and we delivered it. I left about 13 months after a Rive can was kicked off. Mr. Utano continued it. Mr. Doan was the CIO for the entire time. When this committee started asking questions, Mr. Doan was still the CIO. Thank you very thank much. You. Uh, Mr. Sousa. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So there's a couple of things happening here today. One, there's Butler, and then there's a Rive can. Was Mr. Doan involved with the, uh, with the decision to have uh, GC strategies subcontract? Did, was was Mr. Doan involved with the Botler deal at all? Mr. Doan directed me to work with GC Strategies and Botler, who were working in partnership, right. and get them ready for an executive presentation. Mr. Doan did not get involved in any of the contracting or subcontracting or any of that. He was aware, and he had a meeting with Christian Firth and Botler when I was not present on December the 6th, it's part of your package. He also followed up with them by email himself when I wasn't on the email. And I have that email that I can share with this committee. We appreciate it. <clears throat> GC Strategies 
and Baller had no contract with with CVSA or or, or the it was all done through Cortex and uh, Dowling, right? Yes, sir. Um, is the RCN now the RCMP is not reviewing the arrive can application or process? They are reviewing the Bottler allegations being made, correct? To to, to my knowledge, I believe to Mr. Had, and have you been approached by the RCMP? I, I know, Mr. Tano, you worked with the RCMP for some time. Have either of you been approached by the RCMP in this review? No. no. So no one's approached you or asked you any questions relative to, to the appointment of Butler and Butler's allegations. Okay. You mentioned that the CTO does not approve the contract. The CFO is actually the one that cuts the check or approves it. But would they approve it without your input by way of the contract meets these requirements, they would have to rely on you to provide that information as well? Yeah, uh, maybe Mr. Utano's best place to answer it, but I'll just start off by saying uh, we would fill in the paperwork for the justification that talks about the technical requirements, why a sole source justification is required, urgency in terms of time uh, and whatnot. Um, and, and there's usually a back and forth with that because they vet this stuff really thoroughly. They make sure that everything is done like to- There's a, there's a threshold as well, right? By which needs for approvals, is that correct? So, so the CFO organization at CBSA is called Comptrollership. They have their own governance for all of contracting that's separate from the IT branch. And how did that affect the decision with regards to this, the Butler, uh, uh, proposal. Butler would have been a task authorization on an existing contract. Uh, I provided it yeah. for your thing. It would have come through as Dalian Karatex. They would have looked at it for form and fitness. They would have looked at it for compliance within the contract because the contract itself had a scope and it had categories and PSPC would have done the same thing. So when the contractor then, the prime contractor who is Dalian responds to the request, they respond to it with an estimate of the cost, the resources, the security certificates, yeah. and everything. And that goes through the, the contracting people. Fair. We, we do the vetting in terms of the contracting team outside of PSPC that they meet the grids, that, that there's it's fit and it's right. compliant. And then uh, I would sign the task authorization. So GC Strategies, and there's been references in regards to their mode of operandi and how they uh, act and they're sort of a two-man show and but they assemble all of the experts to provide for a contract as they do for a rive can that's not what they did with Butler. they actually partnered with Butler to try to come forward with an opportunity to do a big deal thereafter um, and i think that's part of the reason that they're upset because that didn't come to fruition um they also made reference to a cabin or a cottage or a chalet. Is that you? I mean, a lot of allegations are made about your relationship with Firth. Can you explain? So, so uh, I just want to be unequivocal about this. Uh, I've never had a contractor or a vendor or anybody at my house or at my cottage. Uh, I have a little cabin in the woods. I go there sometimes, and I, especially during the pandemic, to just get away from things as I was working extremely hard. Um, I've met Christian Firth three times out of a workplace in my entire life. Two of those times were after the pandemic and after Arrive Can started. Two of the three times was with Mr. Utano and my mobile development team, and I was there for about 15 or 20 minutes. I have had lunch with Christian Firth one time. I paid my own bill after the pandemic before I left the CVSA. That is all the interactions I've had with Mr. Firth. I've only had a professional relationship with Mr. Firth. I do have fairly informal relationships with people. As I've told this committee, people call me Cam all the time. They know that they can reach me. I leave my calendar open, I answer my phone, and I try and be as open and available as I can to employees, staff, peers. And I was asked to work with private sector. So anything new, innovative, anything that sounded interesting, I would obviously be interested in. Mr. Firth, had partnered with several different companies in the private sector. He told this committee that he worked with 22 other government departments. He had 40 some million dollars in sales and he had been fairly successful at doing it. People talk in town. Mr. Utano can testify to the fact that we called a couple of different departments and kind of did a reference check to see this if the work was good. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Was, thank you.
I'll give you more time um, later. No worries. Mr. Brock. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. McDonald, for clarifying your secondary residence. There was uh, a quite, uh, quite an issue last Thursday as to whether or not cabin, camp, tent, chalet. So thank you for clarifying that. Uh, another area I want clarified, sir, and I've listened very carefully, and, and if, you, if you said it once, you, you may have said it half a dozen times, as, as well as you, Mr. Utano, in terms of being very unequivocal in your uh, responses that it was uh, Mr. Doan who was responsible for retaining GC strategies with respect to this Bottler contract. And I just want to confirm that again, that it, that is correct. That is your evidence, correct? I will try and say it to you as clearly as I can, but I need a minute and I will give you as much time as you want. I, I don't have a hard can you, time. Can you to reduce leave. it to 30 seconds? Mr. Doan saw the proposal that I sent him after I received it and okay. asked for a meeting. Mr. Doan had a meeting with Butler and saw a demo. Mr. Doan told me to get them ready for an executive presentation. Okay. I have my notes there in there. The president, the VP of HR, the CFO, and others saw the Bottler presentation. They were interested in it, and there was general consensus that we should go ahead with some work. I worked with my peers at the DG level to develop a statement of work, which was for a feasibility study, not a pilot. Okay. I emailed my boss and told him I was using an existing contract, and I sought permission to go ahead, and I received endorsement to go ahead. Okay. Again. You and Mr. Utano did not specifically seek out GC strategies to be the ghost contractor, correct? No, we received a proposal from Butler and GC strategies. The answer is correct. Correct. How do you then reconcile, sir? And I'm, this is a question to you, Mr. McDonald. A year and a half after you leave the CBSA, you write uh, an email to Mr. Doan, as well as other members of CBSA, uh, Ms. Sabarin, Mr. Utano and Mr. Bird, October 29th, 2022. And I'm um, quoting various passages in, in, in this particular email uh, attributable to you. You asked me for advice on the key question of why GC strategies. But I also think we are all grappling with who selected GC strategies. If you're so unequivocal today, November the 7th, 2023, why were you equivocal on the 29th of October, 2022? As I explained, Mr. Chair, I wrote that email to Mindone after I had been threatened. I wrote that email trying to give Mindone words okay, thank that you. he could use at this committee. Thank you. Um, I'm going to caution you as well, sir. If you don't want to answer this, I can understand your lawyers are present, but there is some really damning information in this email, which in my view as a former prosecutor encroaches upon criminal law in terms of interfering with witness testimonies. You're, ask, you're, you're actually specifically coaching them on what to say uh, with anticipated questions put to them. I'll give you some examples. Uh, suggest, I will start by saying that I'm not per personally familiar with GC strategies during the time in question. If pressed, come on, we want some accountability here. Who decided? How did this company get a contract for almost $9 million? Who made money off of this? Who was getting rich off of taxpayer dollars? Mr. Chair, I stand by my statement and I don't believe there was a single person and I'm not actually aware of any rules being broken or wrongdoing. This is not how we operate at CBSA. Why are you coaching witnesses who've been compelled to attend at a committee to tell the truth. What, what on earth compelled you to give these suggested answers to them, sir? Mr. Chair, I was emailed by Mindone a briefing package. I believe it was Wednesday of that week. Did he ask for your advice on yes. what to say? He asked me for my help. He wouldn't Did he even ask call? your advice on what to say at committee? He asked me for feedback on his briefing. I'll ask he again. Did he ask your advice on what to say at committee, sir? Yes or no? Generally, yes. And the reason why I can say that is because his briefing package was just full of facts and data, and it had no verbiage. And he commented to me that he did not have the words to use, which is why I wrote what I wrote. Did someone coach you on what to say today? 
I practiced. Yeah, I did. No, does someone other than you coach you on what to say? No. How about you, Mr. Utano? No? no? Thank you, Chair. Mr. Shwari, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll be sharing my time with my colleague, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Kuzmerchek. Um, two and a half minutes. Okay. Um, Mr. McDonald, can you explain the difference between a pilot and a um, assessment, as you call it, or a... Yeah, I, I, I appreciate it. I'll try and go quickly. So, so the whole thing is a lot of times people call things pilots, but they just jump right in and they don't have any ability to measure its success or failure or its cost or its benefit. And so you, you kind of just like, you, you try something like, let's try this app. And, and then afterwards, like you're stuck with it because everybody likes okay. it, but you don't so, know. So there's a pilot and there's a feasibility. Yeah, so from an out point, output, output point of view, is the feasibility output, feasibility study output, the same as a pilot output? Not, not at all. Can you tell me what's a pilot output in your opinion? Yeah, so, so the reason why we would do a feasibility study is so that when you actually run the pilot, you can measure whether it was successful or not. So is it fair not? to say if we're going to do a pilot, they would be configuring their system based on all the data to be able to prove that it works? Uh, 100%. Whereas a feasibility study is whether there are going to be proper milestones, and that milestone, those seven milestones, uh, happens to be, or six milestone happens to be what? A hundred percent. Okay. You, you would look at whether or not it would even work in the first place before you would go out and buy something. Okay. So after two of those six milestone, I believe, were completed, there was a decision made to stop. And there's a con there's a there's a contradiction between why it stopped, um, whereas we're hearing from Butler that fully configured, ready to go. Uh, on a pilot, and then we hear from CBSA saying no. Feasibility study, two of the milestone was done. The rest of them stopped because they did, they were not compliance or there was shortage of staff and funding for that. Which one is true? I can answer that, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I can answer that real quick. So two, two of the milestones were completed and paid for. The client was CBSA's human resources branch. They issued an, a note to us, and it's in the package, requesting that we cancel the TA, citing reasons for capacity and lack of uh, employees' resources that can, they can commit to the project, to which we, we, we executed on their request and canceled the TA. The other five, four milestones of a feasibility study were never done. Thank you. I'll leave the limits of my time to Mr. Ryder. Uh, Mr. Cameron, the, um, this the Arrive Can project, because this is the Arrive Can study, uh, came together in five days, I think, uh, as was mentioned, sort of, you know, the, the uh, the players in a normal situation in a non-national emergency situation like COVID represented, how long would a process like this take on months. average? M months, several months, several months, two months, uh, eight months, 12 months. At the CBSA, even longer. I mean, it, it, Mindon did say he had 1,400 people. There were so many distributed teams, different technology stacks and everything else. It, easily four to six months. Easy. Easily. You were asked to do a six-month project in five days, pull it together. Can you put that into context for us? It was very fast pace. It was very intense. Our teams worked incredibly hard. I had really incredibly people, incredible people that I worked with. They were professionals. They knew very, very quickly what there was and what there wasn't on the table with which to work with. Maybe Mr. Utano wants to finish. I'll just add, I'll just add real quick. The business requirements were never defined when the pandemic hit. We never had the whole picture, and that was the challenge. We started with a basic digital form, fairly, fairly simple, fairly straightforward, but then the complexity came with a pre-border app or a post-border notifications, accounts, et cetera, et cetera. The complexity and the technology and the infrastructure, it never existed when the pandemic in, started. In your 20 plus years, have you seen a project this complicated come together this fast? I, I've, I've, been, I've heard quoted that that was one of the most complicated integrated projects in, in, our, in our time. I appreciate the context. My conservative colleagues would have, would have provided you $200,000 to complete this RiveCan project. What would have happened? to travel along the Ambassador Bridge in Windsor if you had a $200,000 arrive can app? What would happen to Canadian, uh, their, uh, their information, their private information, had you been only given $200,000 to create the arrive can app, as my colleagues across the table would, uh, would have done? What would have happened to privacy, to trade, medicines coming through the border? Yeah. Could it be done? 
not not to what we built over those months and years. No, not for two hundred thousand. Impossible. What the Conservatives would have had built for Canadians to use in their time of crisis would have been junk. It wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked. It would not have worked. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kuzmirchuk. Miss Vignola, uh, for your final round, please. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Chair. Mr. McDonald, in your opening remarks, you said that the feasibility study has had six parts, each with a value of $70,000. And the pilot project was not in that work. Of the $70,000, well, are you aware of what amount went to Butler, what went to GC Strategies and Dalian Karatics? No. As an official, we had, we did not have that information. We never get involved in the discussions with the partners on financing. Would it be a significant improvement in doing an assessment of a contract and understanding where the money spent? If in all of the sub 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 contractors, I might be exaggerating, but it's the impression it's not profitable. You can't have a contract with many, many other subcontractors. Would it be a solution to just stop the craziness? I am an expert in uh, IT, not contracting. I don't think it would work very well. We need to have space for the private sector to work together to solve problems without politics. But I have no expertise in contracting. With regard to ArriveCan, GT Strategies had some 9 million, got experts, other companies were approached do you recall which they were and what part of the work they contributed to? Yes, if you would agree, Mr. Utana would respond. There were more than 20 companies in all. You know, over 19 technology vendors we partnered with, uh, with, our, with our CBSA internal employees and 19 other okay. vendors. Other examples were Amazon, um, Blue Ink, um, Tech Systems, uh, BDO, and of those companies that were approached, were there any that used strategies with subcontractors and sub subcontractors? Is that very uh, usual as an approach? Yes, my understanding is that all of these companies we work with in government in, in this space of IT, Yes, many use subcontractors, especially when you need something unique or complex. Thank you. Do we continue to invest in ArriveCan now, given that it's an optional app? We are, we are no longer in the agency. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mrs. McNola. Mr. Uh, Johns, please go ahead. Yeah, so Mr. McDonald, in the brief you provided to the committee this morning, you described Ms. Dutt trying to circumvent the procurement and contracting process and, and contract directly with CBSA, despite not being an approved vendor. Are you aware that Bother AI is an approved vendor? Thank you for the question, Mr. Chair. I, I have been made aware uh, that Bottler is an approved vendor. They became, as far as I understand, an approved vendor but uh, on a pre-qualified list, which is not a standing offer with the government of Canada. And they only did so to my understanding in Q3 of 2021, well after I signed the TA. Okay. Uh, I also, I think in Mr. First testimony, he said that he helped them to qualify on this invitation to qualify list. So I, I'm not aware it's, of Bottler's- uh, It's my understanding Bot Bottler has been a qualified vendor under band two of the AI source list since November 2020, which allows them to provide work for up to $4 million before taxes. The Treasury Board makes this information publicly available. Now, Bottler is able to contract directly with the federal government. So it's really concerning to me that you describe these many contracting layers with every pass-through 
uh, is is what I'll call uh, what you've cited taking a cut that you describe that as a regular contracting process and you describe Ms. Dutt's efforts to get accountability from your contractors as quote circumventing normal processes so do you really consider this case to be a standard example of procurement procedures being properly followed and I'm asking specifically about the layers of um, subcontracting and the, and the lack um, of any consent or discussion regarding timelines, deliverables, payment amounts. Mr. Chair, I think what's important to understand is that I am not the contract authority. This task authorization with Dalian and Caradix went through CVSA's contracting authority and PSBC. PSBC validated it. It was actually reported that they validated it and they found that it was proper and within the contract. So that's important to know. The other thing that's important to know that the band two that you're talking about is a pre-qualified invitation. It is not a standing offer. So anything that the government wants to do would have to go out as an RFP and Butler would have to compete for it. It's not a standing offer for the government to just go give a contract to somebody. And uh, the rest of you'd have to talk to PSBC. I'm, I'm not a contracting expert. Uh, I, I just kind of follow the paperwork that people tell me to do. I did it and uh, I think okay, it's been okay, validated. But, but you're, you're responsible to understand and follow procurement procedures. PSBC yes. is uh, they're not a babysitter. Mr. Utano, uh, you have a subcontractor who no longer feels comfortable associating with your contractors, who's writing to you about a non-payment issue, contract-related issues, and asking you for a clean agreement. They're telling you they have no legal or signed agreements with any of the parties, and that they gave no consent for any of the terms. Are you saying that this does not count as a report of misconduct? None of, none of what it contains could be misconduct? Thank you for the question. So, with respect to the private relationships and partnerships companies enter into amongst themselves, that is outside of our purview and our scope. In fact, if I look back at the article of October 6th, someone named Anita Chan from PSPC had the exact same response to Ms. Dutt. We just simply can't do things as we, from, as we think or feel. We have to follow policies and procedures. Moreover, we've got privacy clauses that we sign with the primary contractor that we are not allowed to discuss uh, proprietary information between CBSA and the primary uh, contractor, Dian Karadix. Thank you, Mr. Hitano. Um, Ms. Kusi, please, for five. Thank you, Chair. Uh, why do you believe that Butler was known as the President's Project? Either, either of you. Um, I, I really, so at the very beginnings of it, I had limited to no real um, exposure to uh, the president on and on this project, to be honest, quite honest with you. So I don't, I don't have an answer for you. Mr. McDonald? This was, the president was seized at the time with the cases of sexual harassment at the CBSA and was trying to do everything that he could to find tools okay. or services to reduce it. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. McDonald, you had indicated to the committee that you would be willing to give any documentation uh, necessary for us to get to the bottom of this. Um, I'm asking you both, please, if you would be willing to submit both your calendar as well as uh, meeting invites from the period of January 2019 to June of 2023. If you would please submit those to the committee, please. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, I have no problems with the CBSA submitting those. Uh, I, I can submit from uh, May uh, 3rd until uh, now when I was at Health Canada, but I don't have access to uh, my, my calendar from the CBSA. Okay, thank you. We'll, so uh, we'll work with the CBSA to obtain those. Um, I wanted to go back to something that my Liberal colleague said, and it was this was the $54 million uh, price tag. Do you agree with that $54 million price tag? Do you think that this this uh, application was worth $54 million? If you're directing the question to me, I left yes. when arrived in was at $6.3 million. Okay. I believe out of the $54 million, there were things that are outside of IT, $8 million or $7 million went to Service Canada to, to do things. Uh, when I look at the cost over three years, um, I think if you were to look at major IT systems, which I would consider this a major IT system, I would think that uh, it, it's less expensive than what people are making it out to be. I also, I just want to underline, 
we know everything that happened now, so it's really easy to rebuild something that's been built. It's called like a model. Uh, we didn't have a model to follow when we built Arrive Can. They were coming up with things in real time. This started off as a replacement of a piece of paper, a piece of paper that cost about $3 each. So when we think about 40 million transactions on Arrive Can, I, I like to think about it as a, an overall cost savings but to the government. But do you think the, the app could have been designed for, for less money than $54 million? I think if you had have taken an approach of knowing all of the business requirements when you start, we probably could have saved some money, but we didn't know what the requirements were. We didn't know what waves of, of the variants were going to be, and we didn't know how to necessarily, well, I'll leave the politics aside. The business requirements came from FAC, and all we were trying to do was streamline uh, the, the, the border and, and get information so that the streamlining of those people crossing the border could be quicker. That, that, that was well, what, what I'm hearing was. you say is that it, it, it could have been designed for, for less money than, than the $54 million that it was um, designed for. Yeah, Did you want to add something yeah, briefly, Mr. Gatana? So it, I would agree with that comment in a normal circumstance and not a pandemic. I okay. think so. And the number two, and we were on that trajectory of developing our employees to become autonomous in this capability and, and to and these uh, these skill sets. But it just takes time. Unfortunately, the pandemic hit as we were trying to establish that. So oh, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. My uh, nine million to uh, GC strategies. Like that money certainly could have been saved there. Uh, my last question is, Butler has said, or the, the principles of Butler have indicated that senior government officials could potentially be receiving kickbacks, both direct kickbacks as well as indirect kickbacks for both ArriveCan and potentially other contracts as well. Do you have any direct knowledge about senior government officials, either uh, bureaucratic or elected, receiving any form of kickback? I have absolutely no knowledge of any senior bureaucrat receiving kickbacks. I can honestly tell you that I have never received one and I competed for my job as was opposite to the inference that was made at this committee. Okay. And that's my, my testimony as well. I'm not, I'm not aware of anybody who's receiving these sort of kickbacks. Uh, thank you. With my last time, Chair, I will um, just briefly ask, where are we at for, with the witnesses, the PSPC witnesses on Thursday, please? Um, just very quickly, we have three for Thursday. Uh, we are getting a bit of the runaround okay. for having them okay. um, appear, unfortunately. They verbally have said, but they are refusing to put it in writing. I suspect that's what, probably what where we're say, going. What did you say, Mr. Jawari? Yes, thank you. I suspect that. What a I great idea, that. Um, Mr. Jawari. Ask committee's permission to leave it with me with the names that I have. Yeah, they agree to be summoned. Perfect. Do you require me to read anything into the record, Chair? Yes, yeah, sorry, this is the ones for Thursday. Correct. We are summoning okay. for Thursday officially. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And the names, sorry, I'll just yep. read it off because sure, these please. are the ones that we have posted. It's Angela Durigan, Anita Chan, Savannah Mansur. That is your time. Mr. Souza, if you wish to finish up. Yeah, please. thank you. Um, so Butler's engagement in, was prior to the pandemic, correct? No contracting was done until after the pandemic. The first initiation, if you will, the first series of meetings was prior to the pandemic, yes. And you may mention that they were uh, not Butler specifically and not GC Strategy specifically, but certainly uh, the contract term. Right, that that's who who was put in place, and yet they delivered a pool instead of a kitchen. I think you were making a reference to. They were not really doing the deliverables that were anticipated. Correct. But Butler keeps saying that they did all of this work and that they were owed all of this money. They configured their platform as I think a specific example. We never asked them to configure their platform. We Fair never enough. asked them to do any IT work whatsoever. We asked them to prepare an evaluation about whether or not their platform would even be suitable for the CBSA. Yeah, in comments that they provided this committee, uh, we I asked specifically if they were compliant, if in fact there was any disagreement with their price in their contract. And they said no. They said they had complied with the issues, but now you're telling us that was not the case. 
all, all I can tell you, sir, is I helped write the statement of work. I worked with colleagues in HR, in finance, to develop a statement of work which got translated into contracting things. There are six deliverables here. None of them are a pilot or configuration of technology. Fair enough. I'm just trying to get clarity just to make sure I, we have it understood. Yeah. I, I get that. Listen, bottom line, this committee is concerned. We're concerned with the, the, the allegations that are being made. We're concerned by uh, supposed nefarious activities. You've heard some of the line of questioning, talking about people not speaking the truth, and basically they're in the take. They're on the take. So we're, we're concerned that that kind of activity is existing, and of course public opinion is taken low because social media is picking up on it too. And obviously you've been targeted in some of these respects. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to clarify some of that once again, because this is one of my final opportunities to ask you questions on this issue. And we want trust in the system, a system that's been existing for how long? How long have you been involved in this? 23 Multiple years. different parties, different governments, correct? Mm -hmm. And do you see value in the work that companies like GC Strategy provides? I mean, you obviously use them. So, Mr. Chair and members of this committee, I can understand and I can appreciate some of the questions that are being asked and why they're being targeted the way that they are. A general contractor, when you're doing a whole bunch of renovations on your house, is beneficial because they're a single throat to choke. In the case of the private sector and their partnerships, my understanding is that PSPC welcomes partnerships. I think there are a lot of discussion around this table around whether or not subcontracting is useful and whether it's good. As an IT guy, as a as a guy who's worked in IT for 19 of the 20 years that I, 23 years I've been in government, that's not for me to decide and it's not for me to judge. I do think that governments of any color can decide to change policies if they would like to, to allow or change the methods of subcontracting. And that's a discussion that may need to take place. That's a, a study this committee may want to undertake. But in terms of nefarious activities and some of the things that have been suggested at this committee, I have never seen that in my entire life. I have never seen something called ghost contracting. I have never witnessed or I would turn a blind eye. And I don't think Mr. I know Mr. Utano wouldn't either to anybody stealing from the government. I'm not sure how much time I have left, Mr. Utano. It's been alleged that in this in this committee, you have to speak the truth. You're obliged. We've heard from the whistleblowers, the individuals that came forward with these issues, are they telling the truth? Mr. Speaker, with respect to the allegations that were levied against me from our September 27th email, I provided the actual email and the responses. To, from, from that perspective, I believe they've been, they've, they've, they've misled, they've misled people in that direction. Anything else that was not involved in myself in particular? I'll leave Mr. McDonald? I believe they've misled this committee. They worked with GC Strategies. They went to 10 different departments. They, they've systematically told this committee that they thought they were gonna make $26 million a year, that Mr. Utano had, had told them they were gonna make 62 mil, or $26 million, my apologies, a year. There were no such commitments made. There was no contracting put in place. The CBSA would never have contracted for the federal government. And, and even in terms of that, as I've clearly stated, the client for Bottler wasn't IT. The client was HR. If the client didn't want that work, they didn't do the work. So, I, I mean, I left a month and a half after the Bottler work started. I, I, I can't speak to the work and I can't speak to the complaints and I can't speak to the allegations that came a year later. All I can tell you is that the CBSA has never contacted me about ArriveCan or Bottler. The RCMP has never contacted me about Bottler. And I've, I've done my best to provide a fulsome recollection of events so this committee understands what my actions were and I can only speak for my actions. Thank, thank you, you very Chair. much. Mr. McDonald, Mr. Utano, thank you for your time today. Uh, I need about two minutes of time with everyone. Uh, you gentlemen are welcome to hang around and listen to uh, Ogo intricacies, but you otherwise you're dismissed. Colleagues, on the 21st and the 23rd, we had uh, shipbuilding, but we've been adding witnesses at a fast pace for this study, and we will not have time. I've canvassed uh, many of you 
that uh, suggesting we've pushed back the 21st and the 23rd for the shipbuilding line by line to later, if everyone's in agreement with that. I suspect we have the SUPs coming on the 9th, and therefore we have to fit the ministers as well as BBO in. So unless anyone has an issue with that specifically. The other one that's just come up is Thursday is the three witnesses I mentioned off for PSPC. We've been uh, approached by Mr. Mills, who's appeared often in OGO with PSPCs as ADM, and a, I'm going to butcher this name, a Levant Osmutlu, DGS Strategic Policy Sector, have asked if they can join the three witnesses from PSPC on Thursday as well. I'll leave it up to you if you wish that. Mr. Zwari. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to clarify because I've, I've just been informed that the uh, PSPC, did, uh, the three witnesses, they did not refuse to come and they are fine with coming. And uh, <clears throat> they've asked uh, for some senior people um, to be joined with them. There is a statement has sent, uh, a correspondence has sent to the chair and I suggest the, sh the chair shares with that. And I definitely support the fact that those, those two senior um, senior uh, officials also uh, joined the, the three witnesses. And, uh, and um, I should have done my homework better to ensure who those three are, but, uh, but if they're junior staff. And um, th therefore, I don't think, in my opinion, they're, 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 there does not need to be a, a sum and send because they are coming. And all we are trying to decide is whether can we have two, two other uh, members joining them. And I don't see any issue with that. Mr. Generos. Uh, we are a bit over the time we had we had planned. And I'll just say that the committee has already made the decision to summon them. And if they're going to come anyways, it's a it's a moot. It's a it's a moot point, right? Like like whether it's it, the, the point is they're going to be in these chairs. And uh, uh, I, I don't think. I think there's there's a reason the community is here from these these people, and uh, I don't I don't think having, I mean the people are welcome to be in the gallery, but uh, but I think we want to hear from the witnesses we want to hear from. Uh, Chair, I, I did want to ask just about the um, about Jose Bastian. Uh, I'm not familiar with who that is. Yeah, yeah, that is the retired person that we have not been able to get a hold of. Our track down. Oh, okay. Um, would that person be relevant to have with this panel as well, or do some as a witness? So okay. All right. Well, well. I guess we can come back to that. Yeah. Mr. Kusmer, Chuck, and Mr. Sh yeah. Okay. Can we get a resolution on whether the DG and the ADM could join as well at the same time? Uh, I can get an agreement with that. I understand what you're saying, Mr. Genwes, but. We'll What's wrong to, to hear ask for more witnesses from them? But it'll be all five of them, is what, yeah. what we're suggesting. Yeah, just bring them along. You don't have you don't have to ask questions of them. You don't have to ask them a question. You guys don't have to. But we've got questions for them. Hundred percent. People are. Go to a talking, speaking order, please. Go ahead. Yeah, so people are just chatting yeah, informally. I, 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 I do think it, um, it, it matters. I mean, I, I had, I had asked to hear from Mr. Doan alone for a reason because I thought, um, um, if, if uh, someone's ability to pass things off to someone else when you have a large group, I mean, if, if we can, we can also have these these other witnesses come uh, subsequently, but. Um, just given given who it seems were directly responsible for certain things, given also that we like we have a dynamic right now of, uh, frankly, of senior public servants accusing other senior public servants of lying to the committee, right? So, uh, I think, in that context, having people testify alone and or, uh, separately without without having everybody's bosses come with them it might might be judicious under the circumstances. Mr. Kuzmerchuk? Yeah, we want yeah to I was, was going to say, if you look at the last couple of meetings we've had, we've had um, 
and Mr. Mr. Johns wants to speak there. He's just, uh, you know, just want to make sure that we're not ignoring him. But um, I was going to say, look, we've had we've had testimony from Butler. We had testimony from Mr. Firth. We had testimony from Mr. Cameron, Mr. Utano, and there's contradictory information that can't be either corroborated or can't be contested. And so here we're suggesting that we actually bring more witnesses to the table to include junior level as well as the senior level folks that have, um, you know, have insight uh, at a certain level, higher level, and that could answer questions. And I just think have them there together. They actually offered to come to uh, to committee. We want to get to the bottom of this. Thank and you, and I, I want to Mr. say that uh, that's, 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 that's the reason I want to have the, yeah. the, Mr. the Johnson, folks no, here. Well. You have your hand up, but I'm, I'm getting some kind of nods around the table. Can we just agree that uh, the the two, the ADM and the other one that we that mentioned can come? Yeah. And we'll just settle that? Sure. Yeah. So we're running closely around yeah. our time as well. Mr. Johnson, do you need to address? Uh... I was just, just exactly going to go there at that time. Uh, it's been standard practice in this committee that we've uh, okay. allowed uh, staff to come. Just don't ask them the question if you okay. if you want, I guess, is the yeah. answer to that. We did have, thanks, Mr. Jones, we did have a motion that we would summons them because we could not, we were not getting confirmation the regular way that they would and attend. I will take your word for it <laughs> that you. they will physically be here. Therefore, I appreciate we will not that. Thank you. Summons them. Thanks very much. If we're fine, we are adjourned. Thanks, colleagues.